Welcome to another episode of Box Press. I'm your host, Rob Gagne with Bovida, and today I'm bringing you an episode we shot at this year's IPCPR event. I sat down with Hall of Fame, Carl Malone, the mailman, Utah Jazz. This guy is a legend, and that, rightfully so, is the name of his cigar shop. And you'll see why in this whole interview, because Carl Malone, big guy, big NBA player, kind of intimidating. I don't know anything about sports. And so I was really nervous about what I was going to talk about, what we would kind of cover since I don't know a lot. And I asked him before we sat down, I said, is there anything you want to cover or not cover? And he said, you know what? I'd like to just talk about my cigar, Carl Malone, Barrel Aged by La Aurora. And if we could just keep it to that and leave sports out, that'd be great. And I said, hey, no problem. I don't know anything about sports. He leaned over, pounded me and said, let's go. So we shot the episode. You guys are going to get a full insight, more in depth probably than regular, because I'm going to ask him questions about his family, his lifestyle, what he likes to do. Heck, you might even get some tidbits of what day he got married in this whole episode. So stay tuned, listen to this whole podcast and enjoy the ride. Carl Malone, Barrel Age by La Aurora. Great cigar. I'm Carl Malone. <laughs> And I'm Katie Malone. And we approve this message. (laughs) You're listening to Box Press, where we are passionate about cigars and how to care for them. Welcome to IPCPR 2018. I'm sitting next to Carl Malone and Katie Malone, his daughter. Thank you guys for joining us on Boveda's Box Press. Quick review here of basically, Carl, you got a cigar. Yes, sir. Tell me just a little bit about it. We don't have to go into the huge nitty gritty about it, but we're enjoying it. The nitty gritty is, first of all, thanks to Laura and her okay. Nenez family that allowed this to happen. Yeah. Uh, second of all, this is a barrel age by Carl Malone. Okay. So as we uh, harvest tobacco, we let it sit for three months. Then also the next six months, we put in rum barrel. That's case in point, barrel aged by Carl Malone. Then we let it sit another three months in the curing aid. Voila. That's what we have here. Nice. And where can we get it, though? We have a really exciting news that we can't say now. We just uh, did a gentleman agreement with an unbelievable distributor, which Wonderful. we can't call the name. That'll be coming later. They will be coming to our shop, which is Legend Cigar and Vape in Ruston, Louisiana. Nice. Uh, this is uh, the owner. Uh, I am the... She keep me the very quiet owner, and she's the owner. This is Katie Malone. I'm the boss of everything. Oh, I'm wonderful. The Perfect. Well, of course. Thanks, Katie. <laughs> so what will happen is as we start receiving our cigars, they will come into Legends is where we will place the orders and send them. But our distributor, which I can't tell you at this point, will be our distributor that will be distributing worldwide. Wonderful. We were talking a little bit about your f- kind of like early cigar experience. Do you remember your first cigar? Yes, sir. I turn, uh, it's hard to imagine, but black people, we do turn different colors. I'm not going to say blue. <laughs> but anyway, when I had my first one, well, years earlier, I got beat because I snuck a pack of Marlboros Ooh. out of our little country store that we own called Turner's Groceries in North Louisiana and almost died. Yeah, so when I come it. back being bold, my mom said, go cut a switch. So I was about 17 or 18, shouldn't have with my cigarette. Was 25 when I had my first cigar. 25? 25 years old. So you waited a while. I was just starting to play, and I had my first cigar then, and was hooked ever since then, you know, with them. And to me, it's, it's really neat because with the design of our box and label, the whole family was involved, and it was Yes. Your family? Your yes. immediate family? So Katie, oh. your wife. Oh, God. I can't even tell you how many, but I was from Utah, and we got one wife, but multiple children. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Never mind. You're a little slow. But anyway, oh <laughs> so, but, but, but anyway, the whole family was involved uh, in the planning. So wow. we flew down to the Dominican, okay. uh, Laura Roar, Yep. and we sit in a room, and after about the second trip is what Mr. Leon said, these are the looks he have. <laughs> Like, that's okay. Well, we all sit in the room, and we started hashing it out in the boxes and everything. And it's just been amazing because the whole family was involved. So when we launched it on Saturday at our booth, the whole family was here. 
Wow. That was in, and one of our uh, sons was in college, but everybody else was here. So this is a humongous what? day for us, a week for us that we launched them here. This might sound like a weird question, but why was it important to have the whole family involved? Just because you wanted everyone's input or just because of how your guys' family is, you're very tight knit? Yeah, we're like a really close family. We do everything together. Like when dad was playing people, some people don't understand like a lot of players now, they always have their family separated. Right. Well, my dad, ever since I was a baby, I was everywhere. I was on the, when he went to the Olympic team, I was there. I was nine months old. Everything we've done has been together. So. Was that intentional for you to always keep your family near? Well, I, you know, I was from a single parent home in North Louisiana, and my dad wasn't around, you know, which is fine. And I just said that when, when we make decisions, any of them, they don't have to be big. I want them involved. I want their input because if they see it somewhere on the street, they are just invested that I am because they picked the logo. Because right. dad didn't want them saying one day, Dad, why you do that? Yeah, why that you looks do that? Weird. So, so it was yeah. it was neat for me because our meeting at Laura Roar, I just sit and listen and they no no, let's do this. And then it final result because when you truly partner with someone, which is the oldest cigar factory in the DR, Law Roars. And when you partner and you see how they are, it's they're very family familial. oriented. They structured. They they yeah. tight. So it was a it was a partnership made in heaven because their right. beliefs are our beliefs, family, friend, and everything. So when okay. we did our cigar with them, it was just amazing. It, right. I don't even think it felt like a business meeting yet. But to right. have them in Bob is is truly amazing. Just an extension of the family. Yes, sir. Nice, <laughs> Carl. How long have you been married? Twenty eight years. We've been together. Uh, another two, so it'll be 30 years we've been together. It'll be 29 years, December the 24th. Nice. Now, one, Christmas Eve. So one would act Christmas Eve. <laughs> one would act that question. You got married on Christmas Eve? Yes, sir, but it's a, it's a method to Tell my me madness. How did that happen? Well, number one, I didn't ever want to forget because you guys forget. What Let preacher me. was available on, on the Christmas our, Eve? Our team chaplain. Team and Chaplin. don't laugh, but his name, God bless his soul, he just passed away about uh, six oh, yeah. months ago. Uh, Dr. Jerry Lewis Dr. was Jerry our Lewis. team chaplain. We had just came off a trip, our pre-trip Christmas trip to Orlando, Miami, Cleveland, Indiana, Detroit, New York, New Jersey. And I said, look, if we're going to do it, let's do it this day. And $300 later <laughs> in our house... <laughs> We got married on Christmas Eve. So did you propose before this, or was this a sp just like spontaneous? I proposed, I proposed before that, long before that, but just it just never, happened real quick. Just never yeah. planned it, and then all of a sudden you're like, let's do it now. Let's do it now. And $300 later, boom. What made you want to do it now? Because it was Christmas Eve. Yeah. Those are time, it's just an excitement. Right. Then I didn't want to forget. Our anniversary, yeah, because we get in trouble for that. Makes it, you know, makes so it easy. Christmas Eve, hey, yeah. yeah. But uh, just too much run together, though. Okay. Uh, we got anniversary, Christmas Eve, uh, Christmas, yeah. All New Year's, it was too much for my little brain, but I overcame it for a while. <laughs> okay. And, and my wife is amazing. Her name is Kay, and Kay? she was in K K Y, and she was involved in all of that. And I picked uh, my wife's name, Kay, so I won't forget that name. No, just kidding. <laughs> 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 so anyway. So, 30 years plus years together, give me your elevator pitch on advice to stay out 30 years with my future wife. Well, communicate, trust, stay in your lane. She need her time like I need my time. But then when we're together, we talk about everything. And, yeah. and don't listen to the haters. Everybody excited for you to get married? But 20-fold, they waiting on it to crash and burn. Sure. Oh, it ain't going to ever last. You right. know, but to have somebody that, like, kept the family together while I was gone traveling. Katie was 14 years old, ready to turn 14 when I retired. So, wow. so to have a partner that keep it all together. Right. That's my wife, Kay. She's a doer. How many kids do you have again? We have four, and then I have three older ones. Okay. Yes, sir. So we have four. And three, 
three boys, three girls. Let me see if I get this right. 26 years old, uh, 25 year old daughter, Katie, Kylie, uh, 25, uh, KJ, Carl Jr. is 23, and Carly Malone is 20, and as we speak, she's probably filing her nails somewhere. Uh, <laughs> she's 20 going on uh, 40. Any of them married? Uh, n uh, the older ones are. The, okay. one, one of my older ones are. Uh, the young one's not. Uh, at this so you point. got? Do you have any grandkids? Yes, sir. Is that oh, you yes. say that? <laughs> I have six. Wow. Now. No, I thought it was seven. 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 Four boys. Three girls. No. Yeah. Four boys and three girls. Sure. Yes. So you got a big family. Yes, sir. We have a big family. So is is all of that family here to help launch it, well, or is my, it just the immediate my, family? One of my sons was here. One of my older son. And he was involved in the process, and unfortunately, while we was here, he just had to fly home early this morning because okay. his grandmother passed. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so that. we'll be, so he left, and we leaving here, and we going on our family trip uh, to the wilderness. Okay. But the older ones, they couldn't come because they have their kids. And sure, stuff. got and then, kids and other commitments. Yeah, but then me, my younger brother, and my younger sisters were here because we were in the process too. So. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So it's truly a family affair. Yeah. That's how we do it. Sounds like so, it. It's just amazing. So. What is it about sitting down, smoking a cigar that makes it so special or a unique hobby? So to me, a, a cigar smoke, when you when you get your stick, it's, it's really to me is a fellowship. It don't matter how much money you got, what kind of car you drive, exactly. what kind of your religion. Break down the barrier. It can be six of us in the room. We got one thing in common, all of us. We love a good smoke. Right. Well, that's the conversation. Then we get to where you're from. Like, right. uh, what 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 type of cigar you like? It's right. a fellowship, but it, it have no barriers. It don't matter the race, exactly. religion. It don't matter. In and when you sit down and have a smoke, it's 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 a genuine feel by everybody. Every time I've ever walked into a cigar lounge anywhere or get ready to light up. It's a calm that's amazing. Right. It's like, yeah, you still got the issues, but it's just one of them okay. You know what my favorite part about a cigar shop is? Is no clocks on the wall. Mm. That's my favorite part. Yeah, if if it's a clocks. real, real good store, it won't have <laughs> clocks on the wall because somebody told me once, we don't want you to worry about the time in here. You come in here, you light a cigar, you have fellowship, and you don't worry about where you're going, what you need to be doing next. Right. Right now, you're just doing one thing. Absolutely. And, you know, our our place in Ruston, Legend Cigar and Vape, we do not have a clock. Yeah. And we don't have a TV. We have one TV in the whole building, but it's only for members. So it's fellowship exactly. driven, not it's, just sitting in front no. of a TV. It's, you have to actually be sociable with everybody. You know what's pretty neat? Uh, we're, we're two weeks. We open. Then we close it for the big show. Okay. So... She's flying back tomorrow. We'll reopen. We have had friends of ours that we know. They come in, and we have police officers. We have politicians coming in. Right. Well, guess what? When you come into Legends, we don't want you hitting them up and dumping all your problems on them. So we have personally stopped some people before and said, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. They asking you how you're doing. Don't dump it all on them. They want to enjoy their smoke. Right. Because... And here's, here's the beauty about smoking. When you sit down with eight or 10 people, right? When you sit down with eight or 10 people and someone in that crowd that's smoking a cigar and they become disrupted, they affect my taste of my cigar. Yeah. So I will re respectfully get up and move. Right. Now, if I sit down and I'm hosting it, I'm going to ask you to move because you disrupted my smoke. <laughs> <laughs> man, if you ask me to move, I'm moving, man. I'm out of there. Hey, look, take your time and move. He's big guy. <laughs> no, just take your time and move. But I can't explain it to you. I tell yeah, you can't ruin the vibe, right? Huh? You can't ruin the vibe. No. You can't ruin the look, experience. So we don't allow cigarettes. Really? No. It's, it's cigar and vape. Yeah. And our slogan at Legend is smoke them if you got them. Okay? And I've added some more to it. If you don't have them. Come get them, and we'll smoke them together. Right? I appreciate smoking no, no. together. Oh, yes, sir. See, that's what I'm saying. Appreciate that's it. a fellowship. I think we kind of touched on it, but I do want to just circle back to yes, it in sir. case there's anything missing. 
explain the values that are based off the packaging and the branding of this cigar? Is it all the family orientation that we've talked about or what really kind of inspired it? Well, what inspired it is everybody, when you start getting into cigar smoking, everybody, I don't care who you are, right? It would be pretty cool to say, you know, I want a label on my cigar. Right. Well, guess what? You can do that. Yeah. Don't last long. But the process with Law Roar, the 20 different blends that I smoke at Law Roar, and then we came back to this blend. It is so much more, and I tell any athlete out there, it is so much more than just putting your label on a cigar. The process to me right. was bigger than the label. Right. Now it's got meaning. It's, it's got history to it. And you, you either like it or you don't. See, it's not for me to try to get one more cigar smoker. We're not going to debate about it. Right, yeah. I'm going to tell you my love and my passion and my family love and passion, Law Roar, all the vendors here. It's a passion. Right. I tell them in a minute. You can frown up. You can turn your nose up and say, oh, I don't smoke cigar. Well, great. Right. We do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like talking about a personal religion. I'm yeah. Baptist. You can be whatever. That's right. great. Yeah. But the people who's interested in the message and love a good smoke, that's what I'm about. And that's what we're about as a family. Uh, cigar smoking? No. You either like it or you don't. But do not invade my right. big smoke yeah. and try to dump your your disbelief or beliefs. Beliefs, I welcome them. The disbelief, right. keep it moving. We right. don't want to hear all the, all the rubbish and yeah. riffraff. Yeah. <laughs> Katie, when you were going through and kind of helping design this, mm -hmm. what were some of the key things that you were like, that's got to change or got to have this? Was there anything like that that you and your siblings talked about? Um, not really, but we just really wanted to make it to where people could relate to my dad. Okay. And then that's why we kind of chose the design, like the design for yeah, the it, basketball because design. everybody knows my dad from basketball. Right. But this has been his passion for the longest time that he finally was able to do so right. and make people like see who he was as a person through his like rugged character and everything like that. So that's kind of how we got to this point right here with the box and the labels. We just wanted people to relate to him in a better way. Nice. I don't know, but that is one of the most amazing. <laughs> One of the most amazing designs ever, I think. I believe so. Uh, and if you notice this, what's neat about this box? Rub, rub your hand over it. Oh, it's textured like a basketball. <laughs> you know what? That's I didn't why see you that. got the best show out there. <laughs> you got it. I ain't got to say nothing now. Okay, now, you, you, you getting? Sorry, I'm liking don't get, that. Don't get frisky with my box here. We good. I like that. I got to take it back with me. Gosh. I like that. <laughs> what do you think people value in the cigar community? What do they value? Good smoke, well, box design, label well, design? to me, you can have a nice product. Well, the proof got to be in the pudding sooner or later. Yeah. They got to smoke it, right? And what I like is when a person smoke smoking barrel aged by Carl Malone, they want us they want another one. And, and they want to pump again. See to me, I think what they I think what they really appreciate about it is when you know the product. I'm not sitting here telling you I know every ins and out about the t I'm learning myself. Right. But it don't take long at all for people can say that's real. And then being with Laura Roar, and they believed in us. We're, we're outsiders. Right. And for them to allow us in on my life, yep. the last breath I got in me, I will never disappoint them. Right. Uh, because they they are not in the market to launch a cigar yeah. that don't do anything because their reputation's on the line. Right. The people, the Hernandez family, in particular Eddie and his dad, Ed, yep. Eddie Sr., they have a reputation. They, right. they, I'm not going to put him on the spot, but they can't afford to be partnered with something that don't work. So it was a long process. So I think people appreciate the process, but then when you start talking about it, are you excited about it? Are you like, I'm not going to call any name. Are you like these guys that put their label on a cigar and do they smoke it? Right. You know, that's what people appreciate it. So everybody watching it, 
it, as big as we think the, the, cig, the cigar world is, it's a small partnership. Right. So if your reputation is bad, yeah, people are gonna assume your cigar is bad as well. Right. If your reputation is pretty good, they're gonna try it. You want them to try again and again. Yep. And that's what I feel that people really look for, and that's what they want. Right. And I try all the cigars, and I'm oh, the yeah. first person to tell you about cigar smoking. The real ones, if they don't know it, they don't give you a whole lot of garbage and talking about it. Just say to them, hey, I don't know about that one. I don't smoke that one. I can tell you about the one I'm smoking, but I'm, sl I'm slowly, we're trying Law Roar. We are passionate for Law Roar. So when you walk in the Legend Cigar and Bait, we got a whole back wall of our humidor dedicated to our blend and Mr. Leon and his favorite. So and Katie yeah. can tell you more and about it's, that. It's very amazing too because we live in a small town. We're in the in between Shreveport and Monroe, Louisiana. Um, but a lot of people didn't even really know about La Aurora. So what we did was we literally dedicated the whole wall to them and we've gotten we've had we've been open for a month now and we've had maybe close to almost 200 people walk in and I could honestly say almost half of those people have gotten La Aurora cigars just to try them and yeah. they actually come back for more. So wow. right. we're just trying to help them like they helped us and yeah. we're just really, really blessed to have a, a family like Mr. Leon's family to actually take us in and like show us more about cigars and sure. everything like that too. So it's been really cool. Nice. Well, I appreciate you guys being on the show. Yes, sir. Thank well, you. Like, thank you guys so much for being on the show and we'll, uh, we'll stay in touch. Yeah. And if we could do something for you guys, uh, man, we, we love it. And I would say that you guys have the best humidor packs anywhere. We have them in, everywhere. We have them <laughs> everywhere. And in my personal thing, I would always put a couple in there. Always. So and thank you travel you guys. humidor? Even though it's fine, I just, my security blanket. Put, right a little, <laughs> put one of those packs in there. Set it and forget it. <laughs> Simple. Yes, sir. I appreciate it, Carl. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you guys so Katie, much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.